All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's May 4th, 2023, and Pac West and Western Alliance have just reignited the regional banking crisis. There was more volume today on KRE than the peak of SVB, and how we opened today was absolutely nutty. Again, looking at KRE, even on the week, at one point it was down 9%, but remember, FRC was just on Monday in the regional bank index by Tuesday. It was down 5% that day. So it was absolutely wild. But why I'm on the screen right now, we got a rapid fire go through everything because there was a lot of things that happened and there was also fake news. So let's 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 backtrack a little bit. We're going to start with Pack W. If you remember, we made the watch list yesterday. The title was talking about the breaking news. They said they're announcing strategic options. And we said, be careful of that criteria because that hasn't been a good sign. But I posted that video last night and we were talking about it's people familiar with the matter. People who are unidentified will take a look at 1231 a.m. Eastern time. So that's like, what, 10 Pacific time? Uh, they confirmed it. So they put out a statement and they said, in light of recent reporting, they said, we're sticking to our message, remaining consistent. And then they went into the details of what they are looking to sell and what they are looking to do. Essentially, they confirmed the rumor from last night. And that's why it started dropping after hours. And even Pack W, it was down like 40, 50 percent again even yesterday that was the amount that it was down but take a look that was at midnight tonight right or again that was May 4th but then there's Western Alliance and they come into the picture this morning so first everybody's re responding to Pack W in the morning keep all of this in mind but Wall, W-A-L, Western Alliance, May 3rd, this was yesterday at 9.30, before PACW even confirmed this, Western Alliance gave an update on their financial information. Take a look here. This is two weeks after their earnings. They already gave their first quarter financial results, so they even gave an update, and they said our deposits actually went up. 70, 80% of our deposits are all insured. I mean, they sounded pretty good about it. It actually wasn't bad news, but again, the PACW news and everything started to bring it down, and on top of it, First Horizon, this was a deal between TD Bank and First Horizon, a regional bank out of Memphis, $13 billion buyout, they backed out. They paid a $200 million breakup fee, and TD Bank said, no, we don't want to get involved. So Pack w in the morning, then this first horizon. Wall is giving an update in the middle of all of this, and regional bank stocks pretty much were down about 5%. It gapped down instantly. Even the markets were down. Again, the futures yesterday, they were pretty crazy, and then we just started to really, really plummet. But now this is where it gets very wild, because like I'm saying, we open down 5 we start dropping, and then it's right Right around here, oh man, this is where it gets really nutty because it was it was just absolutely insane. The regionals dropped to 9% because all these other regionals were down. Even Zion was down like 20% at one point. Like everybody was getting taken down. Big banks were down. JP Morgan, not as much, but everything was like 1% to 2%. And then a lot of names, 5 10 20% on the downside. But then Western Alliance, there was a news report from Financial Times saying that they were pursuing strategic options and looking for a sale. Stock was at $21, already down like 30% at that, at that point, uh, give or take. And then that just got halted, brought it down another 30 to 40%. Stock is down 60% on this report now that after everything with PACW, everything we already went through, now Western Alliance, they're saying, oh man, they're pursuing strategic alternatives. Again, this is all on the same day. And then you see this halt right here in this pop. Well, what ended up happening, Western Alliance came out and they said that that is categorically false. So that was the last filing I didn't go over here. Western Alliance today was at like 11 a.m. They said, no, we are disputing the recent Financial Times article. They said they're going to, they said it is shameful and irresponsible to be used as an instrument of short sell. Oh man, they, they went into it, but it was, this was crazy. Again, just considering what we've been through, FRC and all of that, I'm telling you the volume on the regionals, this 
this really reignited a lot of the fears. Again, you just had another rate hike. You have another reason for deposits to leave. And then even after hours, we did get updates from the Fed in terms of the uh, the Fed loan facilities that dropped after FRC. A couple of facilities were up, but in general, all these moves today, it really just reignited a new level of fear. Maybe this is the peak fear. We had a discussion about that earlier today. We're going to see, but at the at the very least, this is your biggest reaction to anything or any sort of fallout since all of the SVB began. Again, looking at the volume, a lot of people were confused even after SVB signature, and we spent that whole month doing nothing. Now, this week after FRC and all of that, I mean, we're watching the dominoes fall, and like we brought up yesterday, everybody's asking now who is next. So, all that being said, I'd be watching Pack W. That is the one we're looking for. We talked about this all day today. I'm expecting big news. Now, tomorrow, there's two big things that we have to be going over. One, it's going to be the non-farms. I'll go over that in a second. But now, two, tomorrow, there's going to be a report on lending activity with the Fed. We're going to hear about loans and activity and get to hear a little bit more on leverage. And that could give us an idea in all of this. So watch out for that. And then like we brought up literally last Friday's video. I don't know if you remember it. It played out exactly as we discussed. And sure enough, it was like 30, 45 minutes after the bell on Friday. That's when we heard the FRC stuff and that they were going into receivership. So tomorrow, I'm expecting it to be calm, but we're going to be on the lookout for bank news and it's probably going to be coming in after hours. So that's what we're looking at, and now let's jump to the non-farms because that's the only thing. Again, day after Powell, there was a bunch of other things. Like I'm saying, there's a lot of charts we got to go over. Apple had earnings. They actually ended up doing decent. It wasn't really a Grim Reaper. I think the same thing could be said by Coinbase. They did better than expected. So did Square. Redfin did better than expected, then they guided down, but sure enough, they, they came back up. I mean, that's it. Team, they did good, and they guided just slightly lower and in line, and then they got murdered. Uh, then they Dude, who else was there? DraftKings, they actually had a lower loss than expected and did good. But for the most part, there was no Grim Reapers in earnings. The regional stuff is really what brought the fear back. Even the bonds, uh, they moved around. Again, the banking fear brought it up. Otherwise, as we kind of cooled off, they came down. If anything, the bond play was actually dropping in the morning to yesterday's Fed level. And then the banking, as the bank stock started to drop, that's what brought it there. So still holding my play. It was down like 1000 bucks. Now we're down like three or 400 as of now but we will see. But in general, uh, what I'm looking for is for them, For I think stocks and bonds should be going the same way, aka if stocks are going to go up, then the bonds should go up with it and vice versa. If the stocks go down, the bonds should go down with it. But for now, we're kind of getting a weird little movement where we've been going down, bonds have been going up. That's how it normally works. But given the Fed, we're going to see. But this is the whole point. Tomorrow's data, the non-farms after all of this, the earnings, everything. We could go back and forth, but I think tomorrow, non-farms in the morning, an hour before the bell, we will be live, but that is going to solidify everything. So as far as the numbers, I could give them to you here. Again, you could get them on trading economics. The jobs number is expected to come in at 180,000 tomorrow. That's very low. It's a drop. Again, last report was 230,000 jobs, but I believe last May, the jobs number was like 480,000. So we're going to see, but like, take a look at all the data. We've gone over this many, many times as what's important and what's not, but Tomorrow's going to be interesting because now, given what's been going on, we just heard the Fed. We've been seeing it. We talked about it. Is bad news going to be bad and is good going to be good? Is a good amount of jobs going to actually calm people down here, help solidify the pause messaging and some of that narrative, maybe feed off the back of earnings or Apple earnings not being the worst, or are jobs going to come in low and now regional banks are down and people are like, oh my God, the banks are collapsing and now the jobs are going down and all that. And then we get a negative reaction. So I think tomorrow is going to probably be a new day in the playbook, believe it or not, because we're coming off this Fed meeting. Either it is the pivot or the meeting right before the pivot or the pause, excuse me. But we're going to see now how the market takes it or if we watch that shift. So that's going to be on the bell tomorrow or before the bell at hour. We'll be there live and 
that's pretty much what I'm going to be waiting for, and that's really going to be it. So depending on how it turns out from here, again, not only do you have that jobs report tomorrow, you also have the CPI. We've held this level very well. The question is, do we open up the range or not? Do people want to freak out? Does another problem arise that we're not really seeing, or maybe it's right in front of us? That's where things are going to get interesting, but we just got to go through the next couple of weeks, wrap up earnings, and then, again, thankfully, the June meeting, it's June. We don't have to wait the extra extra month or so for that, so we're going to see what happens. But as far as everything else, I didn't really make any other plays today. I was trying to get out of the Zion and do that. I was thinking about that, but I just saw I kept bouncing. I'm going to get out of those probably tomorrow. We talked a little bit about the banks. I had the whole Goldman short finally come back. Those Baidu's been clobbering, but just been holding a lot here and then playing the bond play and then I sold out a dash before earnings took a $200 loss that play was from the last earnings and then I was going to go buy into the team but really just going to see post earnings plays I do really want to eliminate a lot but I'm also considering making a couple more trades here on the bond bonds and maybe even the yen so we'll see but really we got to figure out the correlation here stocks and bonds really what does the market believe with this pause stuff how it's looking and if the data is going to confirm it or not and until then, I think we're going to get the war of narratives and all that uncertainty. So I hope you're ready. But that is your watch list, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure Hydra Healthy ready to go. Make sure post your watch list. Make sure we see you there in the morning. I need the armor on. I need the helmet shining. I need you to remember, baby, it don't matter how much you worry. It don't add a second to your life. So what's the point, bro? What's the point? Learn from the bird. The bird is the word, and you better learn from the bird, baby. Let's go. Chad, it's already wild, man. I, I think I'm just I think we're gonna have a lot of fun for the rest of the year. There's already a lot, and we got a lot of training from last year, but get ready, man, because we are entering in the selling May going away before this summer, and this is gonna be crazy. But Chad, I love you. I will see you in the morning. Get ready for the data and peace. Uh <laughs>